Hey guys, this is Jack from tofluency.com and welcome to this live lesson. It's Monday, it's 1.11 p.m. and we have got a lot to discuss today. We're going to talk about two news stories. We're going to look at the language used in both of these stories and just have a discussion about them. We've got some phrasal verbs to review and use this as an opportunity to ask me questions. So if you have any questions about learning English, then please ask them. If you want to know more about me, who I am and what I do, then ask questions as well. Let's just see, comments. Okay, Stacy is here, Gemma is here. Let me start this comment section again. I had some technical problems before and I had to go back and start it again. So I'm just bringing up the chat box and I'll bring this onto my screen. Hopefully you can see this. Yeah, we've got Nafi is here. Oh, Naf, sorry. Hi, Jack. I'm so happy that I'm not late. I'm happy you're here as well. Um, we have Jan. Great, it's working. Fanny saying offline, but we're back online. Stacy, we enjoying. I'm going to go back to my post on Google Plus and Twitter. It's time to delete them. Don't delete them because it's the same video. Um, YouTube decided it was going to be the same video. If you're watching the replay, you might be confused. Let's all just take a deep breath and start again. Okay, so as I said before, today's lesson, we've got a lot to cover. Got a lot of good things to cover. But first, I want to talk about this video. Did you see this video? Let me know in the comment section or the live chat a quick yes or no. Quick yes or no. The title of this video was Will I Win? I posted this yesterday. Now I'm going to explain what we did in that video for those who haven't seen it. A few people are answering yes, which is great. Um, in that video, I talked about the fact that I have put on weight. I have gained weight. So that's a phrasal verb, to put on weight. I have put on weight this year. Now, my wife and I decided to set a challenge, to enter a competition with each other. And the competition is this. Who can lose the most weight by Christmas. So we have a competition with each other. And I'm taking this competition very seriously. I want to win. I want to win this competition. And it's one of these things that I hadn't realized that I was gaining, gaining weight. And generally just being a little bit out of shape. I stopped playing soccer because of the birth of our daughter. I was eating lots of stuff. I was drinking beer nearly every day and I was gaining weight. I was putting on weight. So we set ourselves a challenge. Gemma says, Kate will win for sure. Exactly. I think she's the favorite. She is the favorite. And without going into too much depth, she had a baby three weeks ago so she put on weight because of her pregnancy. So she wants to lose some of that weight now. Alessandra has a suggestion. See if I can bring this up. Um, Alessandra says, first of all, cut out sugar. You can also say cut off sugar, but it's more common to say cut out. You cut something out from your diet. I'm cutting out sugar. I'm cutting out a lot of carbs. I'm cutting out alcohol, more or less. We had a little bit of wine last night. Shh. But I'm cutting out most alcohol. And I'm generally just cutting out lots of stuff to help me lose weight to feel better. I think I've been doing this for about five days now. And after this lesson, or a little bit later, I'm going to the gym. And I'm going to weigh myself and have a workout. Um, very good. Haita says it's a great way to lose weight. Just one O there. 
lose weight. Both will do a great job. She's won already. That's funny. <laughs> Salwa, hello from Egypt. Good to have you. Marta says, do you like sport? I love sport. I'm going to start doing more exercise and more sport in general. Be it is always good. You can cut everything else out, says Jan. Fantastic example. Betul, what is your plan to lose weight? Eat really well and exercise a lot. I think women have a strong instinct or insistence on losing weight. We've got Diego from Venice. Eating's the best, says Starry. Um, yeah, very cool. Keep the comments coming if you are watching live. But let's go back to my slides now. I've got a lot to go through today. This is going to be a lot of fun too. Put on weight. That is the phrasal verb that I taught in the last lesson. Can you give me more examples of how to use this phrasal verb? I have two more examples that I'm going to show you in a second. But please share other examples with put on. Put on. And there are different ways to use this. One of the benefits of using put is that put, put, put. I put on weight in the past. Okay, I put on weight in general. I have put on weight. So it's the same conjugation. Let's go back to the comment section. Drink a lot of water. That um, is from Habib. Marta, I think diet is more important than exercise. Yeah, a lot of people say that. They say that your diet, what you eat is the most important thing and then exercise is secondary. But if you can do both, that's perfect. Currently, I'm eating pizza, says Fanny. Stacy says, I'm putting on weight right now. Um, Haroon, I want to learn English. You are in the right place. Nice to see you again with your wonderful way to teach English. Greetings from Barcelona. I love Barcelona. Danielle, uh, or Daniel, put on your shoes or put your shoes on. Fantastic. Put data on a disc. Put on your coat. I've put on weight for six years, says Batul. So we've got more examples of using put. I'm going to show you some more now. Put on weight. And as someone said, put on clothes. You can put on a t-shirt, put on a jumper, put on a jacket, put on a scarf, put on your gloves, put on shoes, put on socks, put on underpants, etc. So any type of item of clothing we can put on. And then finally we have this, put on a play. To put on a play. And this means to organize a play. So you're the person, if you put on a play, you organize that play. I can also say they're putting on a great play tonight at the local theatre. They're putting on a great play tonight at the local theatre. Um, we have a great example from Jan. Look at the one second from the bottom. An art gallery is putting an exhibition on. Exactly. Great example. Great example. They're putting on a fantastic exhibition at the art gallery. Great, let's go back to the presentation. Have a look at your screen now. And I want you to read that headline. It says, US election. Trump and Clinton in tight race on campaign's final day. Trump and Clinton in tight race on campaign's final day. So today is the last day of the campaign, of the presidential campaign here in America. And both candidates are releasing videos. They're, you know, it's the final day when they're trying to win the vote of the American people. They're trying to persuade people in America to vote for them. Very quick, in the comment section, are you following the presidential election? Are you reading news about this? Are you watching the news about this? Do you know what's happening on? So, oh, Jan, another fantastic 
comment. Why are you putting our attention on the US election? Great comment. To answer your question, because it's in the news and we're going to talk about in the news. Um, so, are you following this latest election? Why are you answering that? I'm just going to talk about this very, very quickly. Trump and Clinton in tight race. So when we're talking about a competition like the presidential election, we can use the word race. It's like a race for presidency. And when it's tight, a tight race means that it's very close. It's very close between the two candidates. It's very close. Um, a lot of people are following it. And there's just one comment here I want to bring up. And it's Nusabai. I wish Hillary to win. Let's use hope here. Let's use hope. It's a, a real example. It's not hypothetical. I hope Hillary wins. I hope Hillary wins. A lot of people are following it. I was watching the news about the US election. The information is everywhere. I hope that Hillary will win. Um, I am sick and tired about politics, says Armando. I am following, I like politics, says Elena. So we have lots of different views here. Some people want to follow it, some people don't. But in any case, we can learn English from this election. So look at your screen. This is Hillary Clinton. And today she released a video urging people to vote for her, trying to persuade people to vote for her. And what I've done is I've just taken part of what she said and it's on your screen now. So let's listen and read at the same time. I'm going to read this and you can listen and read the phrase on your screen. Are you ready? I think we can all agree it's been a long campaign. It's not just my name and my opponent's name on the ballot. It's the kind of country we want for our children and grandchildren. Is America dark and divisive or hopeful and inclusive? Let's look at that last sentence again. Is America dark and divisive or hopeful and inclusive? Now, what she's doing here is she is saying that if you vote for Trump, then America is going to be dark. It's going to be a bad place. But if you vote for Hillary, then there's hope and everyone is included. But I'm going to focus on the word divisive in a second. First, let's go back to that first sentence. I think we can all agree it's been a long campaign. Now this reminded me of what a lot of people say at the end of the day. And it's this. It's been a long day. If someone says this, have they had a relaxing day or have they had a very difficult day or an exhausting day? Has it been easy or difficult? Relaxing or busy? Let me know in the live chat if you are here live. Bring up the comment section again. Got a lot of people talking about politics and some strong opinions here. Um, there's a little phrase at the bottom, don't hold your breath, Clinton won't win. Um, Marta, a hectic day, exactly. If you say it's been a long day, it's been hectic. Betul, so difficult. It's been a long day without my friend, says Haita. Fantastic example. Difficult day, exhausted, difficult. Yep, you guys know it's been a long day means that it's been a difficult day, hectic. And it us people usually say this when they, they like talk to someone or they see someone and the other person says, you look tired or 
are you okay? And then you can say, it's been a long day. You can also say, it's been a long, it's been a long week. It's been a long month. If there's something that's been happening for that time. For example, I have friends who are lawyers and if they go to trial for, from Monday to Friday in the court, they might say, it's been a long week. It has been a long week. So this is a really good phrase to know. It's been a long day. It's been a long week. It's been a long year. And what you're doing is you're, you're, you are suggesting that it's been difficult. It's been exhausting. You've spent a lot of time doing certain things. Now, go back to what she said here. The last sentence again. Is America dark and divisive? Now, a divisive issue is one that really separates people. For example, the, this election is very divisive. It is very divisive. People are very strong for Hillary. Others are very strong for Trump. Other people hate this election. They hate everything about it. So when you have different opinions and people have strong opinions, then this is a divisive issue, a divisive issue, okay? So I have another example for you. The issue of gun control is extremely divisive in America. The issue of gun control is extremely divisive in America. So this means that there are many people who are in favor of guns. I'm gonna use that phrase later, in favor of. There are a lot of people who are in favor of guns. They want everyone to be able to get a gun. They want the freedom to be able to own guns. On the other hand, there are a lot of people who are in favor of banning guns. They are in favor of banning guns. They don't want people to have guns. And this issue is very divisive. There are people who argue both sides of this. And, and people just have different opinions here. In the UK, the issue of gun control isn't very divisive. Most people agree that there shouldn't be guns. The, the people... Um, everyday people shouldn't have guns. So it's not a divisive issue. Let's have a look in the comment section. We've got some good comments here. Politics is divisive. It is, definitely. Can we use discriminative instead of divisive? No. It's something different. Um, you are touchy, I think. Am I right? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Mustafa is here. Hi from Morocco. Good to have you. You are not late, hi am. And then Jan says, politics is divisive, unfortunately. It should be trying to reach common good, like Aristotle said. Jan, you are very uh, a very useful commenter today. Thank you so much. So yeah, to be, if an issue is divisive, it means that people have different opinions, different opinions, and they usually have strong opinions. Gun control, politics, things like that. Those are divisive issues. Now, the last sentence again, actually the last word, inclusive. So Hillary is saying, if you vote for me, then we'll have an inclusive society where everyone is welcome. The opposite of inclusive is exclusive. And I want to just bring up this comment here, this example. Are you ready? They want to make their club exclusive to specific members. I'll read that again. They want to make their club exclusive to specific members. So what this means is that not anyone can join a group. There are many examples of clubs where they are very exclusive. And if you search for top 10 exclusive clubs, then you'll see what kind of clubs these are. Usually you have to pay a lot of money to join. A good example 
is the country club in any kind of city or town. Usually it's very expensive, so it's exclusive. Exclusive to those who will pay. And usually you need to get accepted into the country club. So that's the example of exclusive. Now, a lot of people are asking this question at the moment. And this has a phrasal verb. Are you ready? Are you going to stay up to watch it? Are you going to stay up to watch it? So this is what people are asking right now. They're asking, are you going to stay up to watch it? Are you going to stay up to watch the election? So we're using the phrasal verb stay up. Now the reason we're using this is because the election, the results come in during the night. And I'm gonna share this with you to give you more context. I read today that 11 p.m. is the earliest that the election can be called. 11 p.m. is the earliest the election can be called. So this is saying that you can't elect a president or a, a news channel can't say, okay, Hillary is going to win based on the statistics so far until 11 p.m. So that's the earliest that we're going to know who the new president is going to be tomorrow on Tuesday. So that's why people are asking, are you going to stay up to watch it? And I'm not sure if I'm going to or not yet. I don't think so. Um, Jan says, I'd rather sleep. A staying up won't change anything. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. A lot of people like to know when it happens. They want to watch this live. Just like you guys who are here live, you want to watch this lesson live. You don't want to watch the replay because it's more inclusive, okay? Um, you know, there's more that you can do with it. Doctor, let's just go back to the comment section. Um, I would stay up. So Dr. Rajani says I would stay up. Dan says, no, I'm not gonna stay up to watch it. It is too boring. I love, I love statistics. I love watching these things, so. I want to stay up, but I don't think I'll be able to stay up, especially because if you saw my Instagram or Facebook video before, the clocks went back one hour. So that means it's 1.34 right now, but it's actually 2.34. So that makes it more difficult to stay up later. Um, Jan says your lesson is more interesting than the US election. Thank you very much. Um, I want to stay up balanced in global friendship. Wow, that's a great comment. When the result is shown, I can watch it because of the time difference. In Syria, it will be seven o'clock. Um, I'm gonna stay up with my way to fluency. Sure, I'd stay up to watch it. Someone else said I would stay up. Definitely, I'm, I am not going to stay up. Sleeping is much more important to me. Yeah, probably to me as well. We'll see. Usually I fall asleep on the couch or in bed while watching on my phone. But we'll see. Maybe I'll stay up. I don't know. Let's change subjects now. I have a new topic for you. And this is going to lead to a question. Look at the picture and the headline on your screens now. Scottish primary school stops setting homework. Scottish primary school stops setting homework. This is interesting. This is really interesting. So there is a school in Scotland that have decided, or has decided, sorry, to stop giving homework. Now, the phrase to set homework is the actual action when the teacher says, okay, today, today's homework is going to be exercise 10 from your book. That's the action of setting homework. You can also say to give homework, to set or to give homework. So this school in Scotland, 
this primary school, which, if I remember, is ages 4 to 11, I think, ages 4 to 11. They have decided to not give homework. And I think this is going to be a trend or a pattern moving forward. I think different schools are going to stop setting so much homework. So I'm going to read a couple of things from this. This is really interesting. Are you ready to read while I say this? So you can listen and read at the same time. Here it is. About 80% of pupils and more than 60% of their parents voted in favour of an end to homework. Instead of homework, the children will be encouraged to read books and comments and comics that interests them and to play. Let's read it again. About 80% of pupils and more than 60% of their parents voted in favour of an end to homework. Instead of homework, the children will be encouraged to read books and comics that interest them and to play. So this is something that's really different. A school saying, hey, we're not going to set homework. We're not going to give homework. And 80% of the children said, okay, <laughs> that sounds like a good idea to me. So 80% of the children said, okay, we don't want homework. Let's avoid it. Let's stop this. But more than 60% of the parents agreed as well. So more than 60% of the parents agreed as well. And they voted in favour of not giving homework. So that's a great phrase, in favour of. In favour of gun control. In favour of gay marriage. In favour of not setting homework. So we talk about in favour of when we talk about issues. The last part, the children will be encouraged to read books and comics that interest them and to play. And this, I think, is quite well, it's probably the, the key part of this. It's the key part of this. Because what they're saying is this. We are going to give children and encourage children to follow their own interests, to do things that interest them. And if you have followed me on to fluency for some time, in fact, last week I talked about this in a live lesson. I talk about the fact that if you want to read in English. You should read things that interest you. I shouldn't say to you, hey, read this book. For example, let me move some things. Okay, you have to read this book for homework. Read this, nothing else. This is what you read. You have to do it. Because usually when people say you have to do something, we don't want to do it. It doesn't come from inside. And the idea here is that they're saying, Reading anything is good. And this is taking studies that suggest this, that reading any type of book or comic or anything is going to help your language, if you're a native speaker or a non-native speaker. And that's why I always say, read something that interests you. As long as you are reading, read something that interests you. And actually, let me just get comfy. My wife is a middle school teacher and she had this, this time during the lesson where she said, okay, it's time now to just read whatever you want to read. Bring in, to bring in, bring in your own books and you can read them. And this is when people feel like they can explore and they, they read because they want to read. And that's the idea here. The idea is for um, people in the school, children in the school, to read what they want to read. Let's just go to the comment section real quickly. Um, Marcus says, practice drives perfection, a bad decision. Um, could you recommend some name of books? What if children just want to play computer games? I think it's a good idea because parents don't have to do their children's homework. <laughs> For this reason, in Scotland, kids would love school. This is awesome, isn't it? In favour of children to not set homework, rather innovate new stuff. 
But do you think it's important to translate a lot during reading? That's a different type of question. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, if children don't have homework, they customize it. Yeah, so we have lots of different opinions here. And I think the idea is, if you set homework, a lot of people think, you know, if you say you don't have to do homework, just read something you want to read, then they're not going to do anything. But I think the idea here is to encourage children to want to do their homework, to want to do extra work outside of class, to read for fun. And over the long term, I think that's very beneficial because it develops that love for reading, that love to actually explore things, to choose books that you want to read, etc. Let's have a look. It's amazing to adopt such habits to learn English. It seems a really good idea. Children in the US, USA like to read books, but here, no. I'm from Brazil, here, time for comments. <laughs> I'm not gonna read that comment. Um, Stacy says, yes, it's great when children are encouraged to explore stuff instead of just wasting time training their minds to be lazy. If children don't have homework, they don't have good habits. This is really interesting. We have lots of differing opinions here. This is a divisive issue. You know, we have strong opinions on either side here, which is great. One last comment. In Finland, no homework is set and it has the best education system. Yeah, a lot of people, they look to Finland for ideas because they produce the best results. Finland have the best schools, the best results. And a lot of people are looking at that and trying to copy to mimic what Finland does. Let's go back to the lesson. I've got another example using in favor of. I'm in favor of a smoking ban in public parks. I'm in favor of a smoking ban in public parks. So I just added another example using in favor of. It's the phrase of the day. Speaking of of the day, Q-O-T-D, do you know what this means? It means question of the day. Do you think homework should be banned? This is a question and I want you to leave this on the video comment page. Do you think homework should be banned? And you can say, I'm in favor of, or yes, I think homework should be banned. No, I don't. Or you can say, it depends. I want you to give a great answer. And if that needs to be a long answer, then fantastic. So before I go, if you don't have my book yet, go to tofluency.com slash book. You can download it for free. The five step plan for English fluency. And if you want to learn exactly what you need to do to reach a high level of English, then join the English fluency program to fluency.com slash T F P. This will be fantastic for you if you want to reach a high level of English. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Be sure to answer that question on the YouTube page if you're watching live. If you're watching the replay, you can do that as well. Give this video a big thumbs up. Hit that button, click thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and please share this with anyone who would find it useful. Okay guys, thank you for being here. See you in the next lesson.